Satan didn't understand the mystery of godliness. He didn't realize that Jesus was going to be God himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Think about this. The wisdom of this mystery was ordained by God before the beginning. Why? Which none of the princes, the demons of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It was something about this mystery that was crucial. In order to get the demons of this world to crucify the Lord of glory. And if they had not crucified the Lord of glory, all of us would still be under the law of sin and death. God in his divine wisdom foresaw there would come a time when all of us would need redemption. If Satan had known that the death of Jesus would break the law of sin and death, he would have never crucified Christ. But he didn't know, so he blundered right into God's majestic plan of redemption. The princes of this world didn't know that the Son was going to be Emmanuel God with us. They didn't know that great is the mystery of godliness. This was going to be God manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. They crucified him. And when Jesus shows up in hell, he tells Satan, give me the keys. Satan hands them over and Jesus comes walking out of that tomb three days later with the keys to hell and death. After Christ rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples behind closed doors. And there was one particular disciple that was missing that day, Thomas. When he gets back to the other ten disciples, they tell him, The Lord was here with us. He ate fish and honeycomb. They all were excited, and Thomas said, I won't believe it until I can put my finger in his nail prints. Unless I can thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. A few days later, Jesus shows up again. And this time, Thomas is there. Jesus doesn't go to Peter or James. He goes straight to Thomas. John twenty twenty seven. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Now Thomas is thinking, How did he know what I said? Then it dawned on Thomas that Jesus heard every word he said, and his understanding of who Jesus was went far beyond anything then it had before. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, you are more than a Messiah. You are the mighty God, the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. When Jesus rose from the dead, Satan had a revelation. That wasn't just the Son of God. That was God Almighty. We couldn't kill God. I've been duked. What do we do? Now Satan is probably trying to figure out what to do next with all of his demons. Jesus ascended to heaven. But before he left, he gave Peter the keys of death and hell. The keys to the kingdom. The keys that will unlock the door and let people out of death and hell and give them eternal life. Matthew 16, 19 And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The disciples were instructed to return to Jerusalem and wait until they were endured with power from on high. When the day of Pentecost came, and they all were in one accord, in one place, suddenly a mighty sound came from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, 
because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and they begin naming all the languages they heard the apostles speak. Some mocking said, These men are full of new wine. The apostle Peter stood up with the eleven apostles. By this time he is full with the Holy Ghost, said, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. The Jesus you crucified, because you said, that he being a man and made himself God. That's the reason you crucified him. You misunderstood him. He wasn't a man making himself God. That was God making himself a man. And if you would have recognized that, you would have never crucified the Lord of hosts. And when the people realized that they killed their Messiah, they cried out and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter remembered the keys, and said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that day three thousand souls walk from under the law of hell and death, and into the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Was Satan watching this? You better believe it. Now Satan is thinking, We've got to stop people from being baptized in the name of Jesus. How do we do it? They got the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. I'm going to give birth to the mystery of iniquity. 2 Thessalonians 2.7 For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. God fooled us with the mystery of godliness for four thousand years. We'll fool the people with the mystery of iniquity for the next two thousand years. How did Satan do it? He wormed his way into the church and worked his deception, and by 325 AD, at the Council of Nicaea, they had taken the name of Jesus out of baptism. They took the mystery of godliness that preaches God is one and turned it into an unholy doctrine that there are three separate deities in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Let's look at this closely. What is the mystery of iniquity? If the mystery of godliness is God is one, then the mystery of iniquity must be God is three. If the cornerstone of all truth is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, then the cornerstone of all deception is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is three. Back to was Jesus, the one true God. Keep all what we went over in your mind for a moment. Saul of Tarsus was a devoted Jew. He was the number one persecutor of Christians, because he thought they were preaching another God, this Jesus. He was an upholder of Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. He became the head persecutor of the early church. Even though he was wrong, he was sincere. God said, I'll turn that man around and put him in my kingdom to preach my gospel. Well... As he was walking on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians, all of a sudden, a light that was brighter than the noonday sun knocked Saul of Tarsus to the ground. Acts chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, Saul believed all his life. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And he's thinking, I know this is God talking to me, but apparently I don't know who you are. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? 
This was a Jewish man who believed that there was one God, and God was one. Who art thou, Lord? he said. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Saul went blind, and God sent him to a preacher that came and laid hands on him, and he received his sight, and the Holy Ghost, you all know the rest. Who art thou, Lord? Jehovah, God, I am Jesus. Jesus was simply God manifest in the flesh. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and now liveth forevermore. Then Jude chapter 125 tells us that Jesus is the only wise God. To the only wise God, our Savior, Jesus, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. If there was two gods, the other one doesn't have any sins because Jesus is the only wise God. There is only one God, and Jesus is that one God.